for me is, is having fun with it and just really just trusting the process and understanding that everyone's got their own process too. So the more, the more you have fun with it, the more focused you are, the, the more success you'll have. And it's kind of like a vicious circle at that point. So. What's going on guys? This is Brian from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we have a special interview here with Carl Neal. Now for those of you who don't know Carl, he basically played in the queue for uh, five years. He was the captain of his team there for a couple years and then he went on to play U Sports Hockey for several years at Concordia and now he's playing pro hockey. So he played in the AHL, he played in the East Coast and currently right now he's playing in the Dell in Germany and uh, he's crushing it over there. Now Carl's a defenseman and he's a very skilled defenseman. So defensemen out there that are watching this interview definitely pay attention because he's going to have some good nuggets of wisdom here to drop for you guys. Without further ado here, let's dive right into the video. All right, Carl, glad to have you on board here. How are you today? You good yourself? I'm good, thanks. So I guess we can dive right into it. So why don't you tell the audience here a little bit, uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, about your hockey career as well? Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Carl Neal. I'm from the Chute, Quebec, small town north of uh, Montreal. Played all my minor hockey here growing up. And uh, yeah, honestly, uh, started here. I worked my way up slowly but surely. Wasn't too sure really about much in, in the hockey world, just playing for fun. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, to get drafted in the queue, play a couple of years there, and then eventually get drafted uh, by the Canucks and then go on to the U Sports route and then start playing pro uh, three years ago. And uh, so when you were like growing up and when you got drafted and everything, in, in Quebec, I know NCAA hockey is not too stressed, but did you hear anything of NCAA back then or was it really going... Uh, you know, hard towards the major junior route. Yeah. So when I was 14 and 15, really in midgets and stuff, I had no idea of either route. Like growing up, I'd watch the NHL and that was about it. And then obviously going as a 15 year old in the midget, uh, in the midget league in Quebec, they pushed the queue pretty hard. Yeah. But uh, being an English speaking guy, I always had the option of, of going to the States or to the queue. So in the summertime, uh, going up, we'd off, often do like showcases, things like that. And it was always in the back of my mind, maybe go to the States or go to the queue, depending on, on the offers. And I had to make a choice, obviously, when I was finished uh, my 15 year old year and ended up going the queue route. Okay. So why do you think you chose the, the queue over NCAA? Yeah. So for me, I, I visited a couple of places right after my first year midget. I was actually drafted by Val Doran the queue and then got traded to Sherbrooke and that was one of the reasons why I chose to go to the queue was because Sherbrooke was was a good fit and especially for an English kid they had English school uh, I was able to finish my CJEP finish my high school uh, get a good package for university too after so for me it was kind of like a no-brainer but I think honestly it, it really depends on your on your personal situation like some guys the school route could be a better better option the queue route could be a better option but nowadays I think they're both uh, they're both solid. No, for sure. I think what you mentioned is really important too. You got a good package, right, for for U Sports, and uh, that's that's usually a really really big thing. I tell guys if if you don't really get that much interest, if you're not getting these packages, all that stuff, maybe NCAA is the the best route to go. But if you do get a good package like that to go U Sports, and uh, the team really likes it, then considering major junior is a great great move too. So it really depends on on your personal situation. Exactly. Yeah. So you played overseas, you know, you play, you, you know, you're playing pro hockey right now. How would you describe, um, you know, maybe overseas pro hockey compared to, you know, playing in the coast or, or something like that? Yeah, honestly, I, like you said, I've played pretty much in, in both those situations. I'd say really Europe is more puck possession, like East West play uh, a lot more. You have more time, obviously, with the ice being a bit bigger, so you can get a little more creative and things like that. Whereas in North America, it's, it's, I'd say more North South and with the smaller ice, it's a, uh, it's a lot more of like short, intense bursts. Whereas in, in Europe, it's kind of more like controlled play, but yeah. uh, it's two, two completely different styles, but they're, they're both obviously really fun to play. For sure. Totally. So another question I got for you here is what do you think like growing up as a player, maybe like the top three skills, like players should focus on. And then my second question will be top three skills that, that D specifically should focus on. Yeah. I think honestly for the, the first one, I'm just a young guy growing up is really uh, the creativity part of the game. I think nowadays, like a lot of kids, they are able to go on the ice and do a lot of cone drills and things like that. But I think so sometimes cool. we forget to kind of take to step back and kind of let yourself, let yourself go and let the mind work. Whereas sometimes we're doing drills and we're only focused on uh, certain aspects. And I think that might restrict the, the creativity part of the game. So that would be one. Uh, the other one would be always keeping your head up. That's an, that's an easy one, I think. It's pretty much a cliche, but definitely really important, especially as you move up and you get less time and space. It's important to always be your head up and, and seeing what's going on around you. And the third one, which is, I think, probably the most important is skating. Like the game's so fast now that I think like the skating part is definitely the most important. And you can see that just the way the game's trending, that guys who aren't necessarily the best skaters they kind of have a tougher time keeping up or they have to be exceptional in other ways to kind of find yeah. their right. So 
Yeah. Skating. So, so, so important. Like it, it's, it's the foundation in hockey, I think, but you know, you, you know, you, you mentioned like the creativity, like you said, some guys, you know, you see them in practice, they're great at all the cone drills. You're like, man, this player is going to be sick. And you watch them out in a game and you know, they're, they're not bad, but they're not like, they, they don't have that creativity piece where they're like doing nice, super nice plays and all that kind of stuff. So I think having fun out there, going on the ODRs, trying new things, I think all that's huge to, to help uh, the creativity aspect of it. I think a lot of people kind of, you know, don't um, value it or don't do it as much as maybe before. So it's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you can see it now too with like uh, the Zegers players, uh, like Milano, guys like that, they are so creative that they might not be necessarily the strongest guys or the hardest shots or things like that, but they're able to stick out just by being more creative and, and out thinking their opponents. So yeah. definitely something to consider. For sure. For sure. Now to the second part of the question, what do you think D should focus on uh, specifically? Yeah, I'd say a bit of the same. We're talking about the skating part of it. I think for your footwork for a D is, is really important. Not even just the skating part, but even in the defensive zone, having good feet obviously helps you defend and helps you join the rush too. So the way the game's going now with the speed and stuff, you always want to be uh, in the right position and you want your feet to be following too. So that's definitely the first one I think is the footwork. Uh, the second one, I think, which kind of might get neglected up until a higher level would be least stick handling the better. Sometimes you see uh -huh. defensemen at the blue line who, who stick handle often and kind of restrict your time and space. I think the less you, you dust off the puck, the more it will help you make a quick play. Uh, it helps you keep your head up too because you're not looking down to look at the puck all the time. It's kind of a small thing, but it's something the coach have been have been preaching a lot, especially as the game gets faster. So, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. And the third, I think, is, I mean, honestly, just having fun. Like, for defensive, sometimes they, they try to label you as an offensive defenseman or a defensive defenseman, but I think really just trying to find your own your own game and trying to stick out the way you can is, is really how you'll have success and, and have fun too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the stick handling piece, it is it is a small detail, but it, it's it's so huge in the same way. Um, you know, I noticed to the higher level you go, the less D in particular, the less they stick handle. It's on their stick off their stick right away. Like they make just quicker plays. They're not looking down at the puck. It's really, it really does make a big difference. Cause like you said, that extra stick handle could be half a second more that you're holding on to. And that's when you can, you know, eat the, the lane won't be there anymore to make that pass or where you might fumble it and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely a huge, huge point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I growing up, I don't think coaches really preach it enough, but if, it, if it's something that you can kind of just pick up on early, it'll help you out. It could go a long way, I think. So it's it's definitely something to, to work on. For sure. For sure. All right. So kind of transitioning here to on the ice, to off the ice stuff. So what do you think are, are like some key off ice features that, that, you know, help players succeed? Like like yourself, what, what do you think are the things that you've done to to help you succeed as a, as a person off the ice? Yeah, I think as a younger guy, it was, it was a bit more difficult, but as you, you get older, it comes a little easier. I think for me, it was really being present in the moment. It, it's kind of like, again, it's kind of a bit of a cliche, but it's something that I try to live by now, especially like when I was younger, I always be thinking about, okay, I got drafted. Like, what is, what's the team thinking of me? Okay, I got to do this or that. But when you do that, you're kind of distracted of what you're actually doing and you're kind of not focused on the task at hand. So I think just being in the present moment and like if you're in the weight room you're in the weight room you're focused on what you're doing if you're on the ice you're going 100 miles an hour on the ice and and that is what's going to help you with the process and eventually go where you want to be but not thinking about it 24 7 and just really enjoying what you're doing in the present moment i think is is huge yeah i know for sure being focused on the task at hand like I said being in the present a lot of people like and me too i struggle in the past like what does that mean be in the present but like you said just focusing on the task at hand if you're working out that's what you're doing you're not thinking about math you're not thinking about you know the date that you have tonight or whatever you're, you're thinking <laughs> about that and then the next thing you do you're thinking about that and that only and that's a, a huge skill to have but it's easier said than done so how how do you get yourself in that zone how do you prevent yourself from you know getting distraction distracted and thinking of other things like what what's your process like uh, i've been working on it for for a while but i think the number one tool that i use is, is just checking in so uh whether if i'm in the weight room uh on the ice doing a skill session in the summer things like that is every once in a while, I'll just check in myself and be like, okay, what's, what am I doing here? What's, what's the point? What's the goal? And, and it kind of keeps me on, on task and, and it keeps me focused on what I'm doing. Cause if not, you know, you'll start fooling around and you'll, you won't be as efficient you're kind of wasting your own time too. So I think it's better to, to be locked in for, let's say the, the hour you have in the weight room, the hour you have on the ice and really just focus on that. Not, not saying you can't have fun, not joke around, but every now and then maybe just check in and, and remember where you are and, and the reason why you're there. That's it. That's it. And yeah, for sure. It's important to, to have fun you know we're not robots either it's you want to you want to have fun with it and stuff but it's true you want to focus on the on the task at hand at the same time so but yeah it, it is a, a skill that takes 
time to master. Even me, I think like I, I always try and like be more present, but it, it's it's easier said than done. So I think, like you said, checking in is uh, is really important can help you get in that zone. What are some other kind of mindset slash uh, you know mentality uh, tricks they use? This might be a bit of a vague question, but is there any anything else, any other you know techniques on mindset that you use to help you get in the zone or to to play better overall? Uh, honestly, for me, another one too. Like when I was younger, I'd put a lot of pressure on myself to to try to you know you tell yourself you got to perform because people are watching. You got to do this because. You know, you don't know who's in the stands, but really, I think it's just give you your all the time and have fun with it. Like for me, every time I go to the rink, I try to have fun. Teammates of mine, I'm sure, would say that I'm always uh, always smiling and trying to be positive in the room. And it kind of reflects the way you play, too. So I think for me is is having fun with it and just really just trusting the process and understanding that everyone's got their own process, too. So the more the more you have fun with it, the more focused you are, the, the more success you'll have. And it's kind of like a vicious circle at that point. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it seems, it seems a uh, counterintuitive too. When you say like, go have fun, you know, and you'll be more focused. It's kind of true because if you're, you're having fun, you're more in the present state and you're more focused. It's kind of like that, that cycle you get into. Whereas if you're always saying, Oh, like so-and-so is watching, I have to play my best. If you're always like result oriented and all that, it, it can be good sometimes, but it can get you out of the zone too. Cause you're worrying about a whole bunch of different things. So I agree that, Having fun is definitely uh, a big key for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I, honestly, it's it's crazy. Like for me, it, it changed. It happened really when I was younger that I kind of had this this little moment where I realized like I'm not enjoying what I'm doing right now. I'm thinking about the future all the time, and that's not helping me at all. And that's kind of where I realized like, yeah, I got to be more present, and just have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, what age do you say you realize that? Uh, honestly, at, at around I'd say maybe at university, like in juniors, I was really. Like, especially with the draft and things like that, like I was always worried, like, Hey, who's watching? I gotta be, I gotta perform. I gotta do this. I gotta. And then in university, I realized like, you know, just have fun with it and, and we'll see where this goes. So, so yeah. far it's, it's been working out, but then I definitely recommend it. No, for sure. For sure. I, I feel like a lot of people kind of realize at that age and it's hard. Cause like when you're 15, 16, like there's so much pressure on you. You got, you know, you want to get drafted. You're thinking about, you know, going pro you're thinking about different avenues you want to take there, there's a lot that's going on and you're you're younger you're less mature and all that so it's it's definitely a a, a tough process for for guys that are higher end guys that are going through all this so it's nice to you know like it, it's good that you had that realization in university you're like okay you know gotta take a step back have more fun and it's it's usually more enjoyable overall and you usually perform better too as a result yeah. you've been a leader on your on multiple of your teams in the past so what do you think are you know, some, some key principles you kind of follow as a leader to, to help your team play their best. Yeah. So, uh, before I was, I was named captain in juniors, I really, um, I was a younger guy going in and I, I tried to learn and, and be president and, and kind of be a sponge as much as I could with, with the guys around me, especially when I was 16, we had five 20 year olds and we had four 20 year olds and I was 17. So we had a lot of older guys around that kind of watch and learn from. And the thing that I took from them was really just to be yourself. And I found personally that the most effective leaders were the ones that gave it their all on the ice and didn't always have to talk more than, than they showed by their actions. And it goes a long way, I think, too, in, in your credibility and, and how much your teammates respect you. Whereas if you're playing the right way, if you're doing the right things, if you're showing up to the gym, if you're, if you're going to study hall, things like that, people notice, people see that, and they definitely respect work habits and they respect that you put the team first. So that's the first step. And I think with that comes recognition and just being a good teammate just being an all-around good guy I think and, and listening and taking the time for your teammates is, is something that'll go a long way yeah I mean you touched on all the key points I think and I think time and time again and everyone's answer that I, I question about leadership they they always put like leading by example at the top you know versus the guy was like talking all the time and all that stuff I mean there's a place for that but I think leading by example, you know, like you said, doing the little things like going to workouts, going to study hall, showing up on time, all these things. If you do that consistently over time, people notice that and they respect you as a leader, you know? Yeah, it's good for the, it's good for the team. It's also good for yourself. And That's I mean, it. focusing on that will definitely, definitely help you out in more ways than one. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. When you do things that are good consistently for you and for the team that like people, people definitely notice that. And uh, it goes a long way for sure. You know, you've probably went through some, some hard, harder moments in your career, uh, whatever you're comfortable sharing, like what, what do you think was, um, you know, one of the harder moments in your career and how, how do you think you were managed to push through it? You know, cause we all go through it in, in hockey and in life, right? There's, there's ups and downs. 
how do you think you pushed through like one of those harder moments? Yeah, uh, for me, looking back, I, I guess the hardest for me was was my 17 year old year. I was lucky enough to go to under 18s with with Team Canada at the Ivan Holinka tournament to start the season. So I was ranked fairly early for the draft. And then my 17 year old year, I wasn't really that mature. I wasn't really putting in the time in the room, in the weight room. I wasn't really eating well, and and all those things caught up to me. And I went from being an early an early ranked draft pick to not getting drafted at the end of the season. And when that happened, it was like whoa, like like what's going on here like this isn't what I was expecting like I thought I was going to get drafted in the second round and now I'm not even picked and it was kind of like it was a wake-up call for me and it was probably the toughest thing I've been through because you know all the guys you play with all the guys that got cut from the under 18 team are getting drafted and you're not and it made me take a step back and kind of look at look in the mirror and say like what am I doing wrong am I cheating myself what do I have to improve on and with that I was able to kind of push forward and Fortunately enough, I was drafted the year after, but that was definitely, for me, it, it, it's obviously a privilege to even be mentioned for the draft, or even ranked for the draft, but the whole year thinking you're going to get drafted, and that, it's kind of like devastation, no matter what level, if it's the junior, junior draft or midget draft or whatever, but that was definitely the toughest thing. Yeah, for sure. And what made you like just keep moving forward, like not just be completely devastated and just quit hockey altogether? Honestly, I, I, it never really crossed my mind, but my family definitely helped me out with it too. Yeah. Um, you kind of make a big deal out of it when it happens because, you know, like I said, you see all your friends getting drafted. It's kind of like a pride thing too where, you know, you expect it to, to go in this round. You don't get picked and you kind of think, well, did everybody forget about me? And then eventually, you know, you got to find that motivation inside you. It's, if you want to keep playing, if you want to keep moving forward, there's more than one way to do it. And especially nowadays, there's so many different routes. So many different stories of you seeing guys like getting to the NHL or the AHL or even the juniors through different routes. So uh, for me, it was really just to, to, you know, find, find that fun that I had in the game, focus on myself, realize what, what I was doing wrong and uh, yeah, work on those points. Yeah, for sure. It comes back to finding the fun in the game. Eh? And, yep. uh, and also too, you mentioned your, you know, your family and your parents for me too, like there were some, you know, ups and downs in my career. And uh, the, the few times where like quitting the game, like kind of crossed my mind. It's really like my, my family members and the ones that, that I love that I'm really close to that kind of pulled me out of it and helped me like keep going. So I, I think like, yeah, finding fun in the game and having a good support system is, is definitely huge for sure. Yeah. So I guess to, to kind of wrap up here, my, my last question for you that asks pretty much everyone is what, what's like one last piece of advice that you would give to, you know, younger players out there that we haven't talked about already? I mean, if it's younger players that are, that are trying to move up, I would say, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a quote that everyone uses now, but trust the process, I think is, is a huge one. I mean, like nowadays, especially with, with the internet, with all these videos everywhere, like it's so easy to get noticed no matter what league you're playing in, no matter, no matter where you are, like there's people watching, there's, there's ways people get hold of your, of your tape. And I think just knowing that just focus on yourself and have fun. And, you know, you don't play hockey forever. And especially now me getting older, I'm starting to realize that like your, your years are numbered. So while you play, you may as well have fun with it and, and see where it takes you, but the extra pressure doesn't help. So really just be in the moment and, and trust the process, I would say. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Best years of your life. Absolutely. I, I know that now that I'm not really playing that, that competitive anymore. It's uh, it's, it's great, great years, great memories. And you know, you say trust the process. You're like the third person now to, to say it, to say that. So <laughs> yeah. I think there's probably some truth behind there. Sure. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Carl, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate your time and uh, you know, hopefully maybe in the future you could come on again and we could uh, chat some more here. For sure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. All right, guys, that is it for the interview here with Carl. Hopefully you guys got some good, valuable information out of this. I know I definitely did talking to him. Uh, he's a great guy and he's a great hockey player that you guys should definitely pay attention to the things he says, especially for you D out there. He's really, really knowledgeable and he's a very skilled D that, that you guys can take a lot from. If you got any kind of value out of this video here and if you like this video at all and you haven't already, consider destroying that like button it really goes a long way for these videos here and if you're new here and you want to see more content like this definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward also too if you have any questions for us if you have any questions for carl that you want us to answer definitely drop a comment down below or send us a private email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible all right guys that is it for the video hopefully you guys got some value out of it and you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on that next one